Hi stamping friends, welcome back, it's Sandy here. Today I'm playing with some new products from Arteza. They sent me a few things and asked me to do a review, so I'm going to, and I'm going to be brutally honest. Uh, first of all, let's start with the 36 half pan watercolors. Comes in a nice black tin, and I love the printed swap page that you get. It's printed on watercolor paper, and it's got all the names and numbers already printed. There's even a spot at the bottom if you want to add your favorite blends. Next, it has a flip-out blending platform. If you don't like this, you can simply push the pin on the end and push out the metal rod to remove it. I happen to quite like it. I do a lot of small projects, so I really appreciate all the extra space to add my colors into. And it comes with a water brush. So you unscrew the top of the water brush and you can fill the reservoir, which is the handle, full of water and then screw it back together and use it as a brush. Um, I use these all the time for different projects and they're great for traveling. Next, I have a little tip for you. When you get these, they have this little cardboard uh, around them that has the name and the number on them. And of course, you have to peel this off to get at the paint. What I do is I peel it off and then I stick the center part with that information on the bottom of the half pan and then cut off the edges. Why? Because I quite often take these out of my tin and it's nice to know what color it is and put it back in in the order or if you're looking at the color and then you can cross-reference it to your swatch page. Let's talk colors. The swatch page probably shows them better, so let's have a look. There's lots of brown, uh, maybe too many. There's only three reds, but I am absolutely in love with the amaranth pink. That fourth one in from the left, it is fabulous. There's lots of blue, okay, but there's only three greens. And being a blue-green person, um, I miss the greens. There are lots of blues and yellows that you can mix. I do wish that there was more green in the package. The paper they sent is an expert pack, 100% cotton. It's cold pressed. It's 9 by 12 inches or 22.9 by 30.5 centimeters, two-sided. You can really work this stuff without it peeling and minimal warping. Let's play with it and I will show you how fabulous this paper is. Okay, here we go, paint to paper. The paint hydrates quickly and easily. Okay, it's nicely pigmented. It goes on silky. It's not waxy like a lot of the other ones that I've tried. And it dilutes easily. As you can see here, I'm going to pick up some of the yellow here in just a sec. And I have quite a dry brush when I do it on purpose. I want to pick up just a little bit, add it to my paper, and then add some water to it. And look how nicely it blends out. Beautiful. I really like how easily this paint rehydrates and it's easy to pick it up and to blend it. And you'll see here in just a sec, I'm going to put some down on the paper. It also lifts very easily and it smudges well as well and it blends beautifully as you will see in the card we are about to color. All in all, I would give this paint a 4 out of 5. I really enjoyed painting with it, creating this card, and I think it's one of the better ones for the crafting industry uh, for what I've tested so far. Now I'm going to walk you through the creating of the card. I'm using the Picket Fence Lily Bouquet Flower Set. I have a piece of that amazing watercolor paper in my Misty, and I'm going to be holding it down with my two magnets. I've also got the foam pad in there. I find I get a better stamped image with clear stamps when I've got that foam pad in there. So nail it down with your magnets. Make sure that you've got lots of good space. I'm using Gina K Designs Amalgam Ink. It is waterproof and Copic friendly. So one pad covers uh, two different types of coloring, which is awesome. And because the paper is watercolor paper, obviously it's lumpy. So it takes a few times to ink and stamp to get a good image. You do not need a perfect image. We're going to come back at the very end and we're going to stamp over it again. So don't worry about it. You just need to be able to basically see the image. And don't clean or take your stamp out of your Misty. That is very important at this point. Because I'm going to show you a trick at the end of the the amalgam ink does take a few minutes to dry, so be careful when you're taking this out of your Misty, not to rub it with your finger and smooch it all out of the place. Close your Misty and set it aside somewhere because we're going to be using it again very shortly. 
This stamp from Picket Fence, as you can see, is huge. So if you're going to do an A2 size card, I would suggest just using a portion of it, which I'm going to do here. What I'm marking off, actually I make a mistake right here, I'm marking off four and a quarter so that I know which side I need to do all my painting. There's no use painting a whole bunch of stuff that you're going to end up throwing in the garbage, right? So I'm just marking that off and I'm going to do a pencil line in case I want to erase it down the side so that I know where I need to do my coloring. I'm going to start by prepping some colors. I am using the uh, fourth from the left at the top, the Amaranth Pink, which is number 253, and then one over the red 263. I'm also going to be using the Burnt Umber Shadows, and that's 568, and that's down on the third row, and it's fourth from the right. And you see that I'm prepping some of these colors into my little wells there, diluting them with water, and getting ready to start. So I start with clean water and I do one petal at a time. So I'm flooding the area. I'm going to grab a little bit of that pink. I'm going to start it in the shadow, clean my brush, and then I'm going to gently pull it out until I've got a nice light base coat. And you want to start light and work your way into the darker. At least that's how I like to color. Lots of people do lots of different things with watercolors. Um, I am by no means an expert, but I do enjoy watercoloring. So I'm telling you how I like to do it. So I'm going from both ends, adding the pink at both ends, and then I'm going to come back and I added a little bit of red. And for the shadows, I'm going to use a little bit of the brown. So once I've finished with one, I move on to the next petal, and I try and find petals that aren't touching so that I don't have runs where my um, paint is going to blend into one of the other petals. So again, I flooded it with the light pink. I'm going back in with the red, and I added that at the top and the bottom, and then I'm adding a little bit of brown for my shadow. Over here to this little guy, sorry about my head in the way, um, my camera is directly above me, and <laughs> I had to get in there to see what I was doing. So a little bit of pink, a little bit of red. Shortly here, I figure out that I need to zoom in for you so that you can see better. And um, I do do some more coloring at that point. My apologies for not doing it sooner. This was like 5.30 in the morning when I was doing this because it was nice and quiet in the house. And as the paint dries, it will lighten up a little bit. So this stuff is awesome. You can reactivate it. Just go back in with a little bit of moisture on your brush and activate it or add a little bit of paint and pull it out right over top of your previous one. And then use a clean brush as I'm doing right now and just blend the two in together. This paint blends beautifully. I really, um, I can't say that enough about this paint. I've had some other ones that I've been trying that are super waxy, don't blend at all, and this stuff is just a treat, and it's actually cheaper than the other ones that I've been working with. So there we go. Here's where I finally remember to zoom in for you, so I've sped it up a little bit. I have added my clean water. Now I'm going back in with my pink and I'm pulling it out for the whole petal and then I'm going to come back in with a little bit of the red out to the tip and back into the center. I'm working around the stamens, uh, trying to leave as much white there as I can and then pulling it in a little bit, leaving some white space closer to the center and having the tips obviously the darker pink. A little bit more red in there just to pull it out a little bit and a little bit of brown. There's deep shadows in there, just like that. And so then I can go back over to this top one, which is kind of behind the other one. So I'm going to make it a bit darker, but that petal in front of it happens to be dry. So that's what I'm doing again as I'm moving around, trying to find dry spots to do my painting that won't interfere with the other ones that are drying. But as I see them dry, and if I have something on my paintbrush that I want to add to them, I am doing that at the same time. I kind of work all over the place, just in case you haven't noticed. So again, loading in my light color, putting a whole wash down, and then while it is still damp, adding in my red for my shadows, pulling it back towards the center a little bit, adding some brown, and remembering, hopefully, to clean my brush so that when I pull it out, it blends out to a nice soft color. There we go. And I like to turn my paper because I do like to kind of draw and paint in one direction. I find it's better that way. So I try and keep my paper smaller so that it's easy for me to move around. This is a half sheet of that card, of that watercolor paper, just in case you're wondering what size it is. 
And then I cut it down to, and uh, I think it's five by eight so that it fits into my Misty. And I'm just going back over and touching up a few spots that have lightened up as they've dried. For the greens, I'm using 424 Spring Green and 433 Cobalt Green. And again, I have diluted them into my little pan here. And I'm going to use the light green to flood the area of the leaf. And then while that is wet, I'm just going to grab a little bit of that Cobalt Green up underneath kind of the flower where there would be a shadow and pull it out a little bit with a clean dry paintbrush. And I go around and do as many of the leaves as I can as long as they're not up against some of my wet pink paint. You don't want those blending into each other. It makes kind of a mess. Next I'm going to add 129, the Naples Yellow, and I'm blending that out a little bit. And then I'm going to use a very dry brush and I'm going to just bring it in and do the stems of the stamens and work my way around filling those in and as you can see I have colored the rest of the flowers. I did enough petals so that you could see how I do them and I just went around and finished each one of them individually off camera so that it wasn't a two hour video. So as you can see here now I'm picking up and dry brushing just a little bit of the yellow onto the petals. It adds highlight and it makes it look like sunshine um, and a little goes a really long way but it really adds to the life of your image and you'll see here I'm adding a little bit to what I think the light sides of the leaves and the stems are as well. Back to the paper for a sec and see how little it worked and I didn't even tape it down to a hard board. I was pretty sure that I wouldn't have to because it's so nice and thick and uh, it didn't disappoint. So here we are, we're putting it back into my Misty. I'm going to add a couple of extra magnets just to hold it in place because we're going to do our final stamping. And this is really going to make this image pop. So again, with the same ink I was using before, the Amalgam, and you want to rub really hard and get that in there. And I actually stamped this four or five times before I got this absolutely fabulous image. Isn't that gorgeous? Love it. In my garden, flowers like this have got little dots all over them. So what I'm doing is I'm using the other end of my paintbrush and I have rehydrated a little bit of that beautiful pink that I'm at and I'm touching my petals with the blunt end of my brush to add the little dots. And I'm not going to do the whole thing. There you go. I just added a few little dots all the way around. I think it really adds interest to the flower. Next, I'm going to use my Signal White Gel Pen just to add a few highlights. Now, around the edge of some of the petals, I left those white, and I want to make sure that they really pop the white, which is why I'm adding the gel back in. And I may have gone over the lines with my painting just a little bit. <laughs> That's hard to not to do when you get these tiny little defined spots. Next, I'm going to die cut my frames, and I'm using a new product from Simon Says Stamps. These are the A2 Thin Frame Dies. And so they cut the outside border, and I also use them to cut that inlaid gray border that you see on my finished card. So I need to trim this out a little bit so it fits into my Gemini, stack my sandwich, and I'm going to run it through. You can cut both of them at the same time, absolutely no problem. And you'll see when I take this out, first of all, uh, you be really, really careful about peeling that purple tape off, especially if you're dealing with watercolor paper so that you don't peel any of it back. And I have a little issue with it. <laughs> it's better to use some that's already been used. But here's the fabulousness of these dies. So here's the centerpiece. And then it cuts out that little frame, which is going to allow me to cut another one and then inlay it into my finished card. And then there's my outside piece. And then that's pretty much garbage. So you have about a quarter of an inch of space around the outside of the card to let your card base show. And then I'm going to die cut my inlaid piece out of the same color cardstock as my card base. And in this case, it's Simon Says Stamp Smoke. So I'm just popping that in there. I'm going to run it through my die cutting machine again, and then we will put this card together. 
I'm going to use a combination of adhesives to attach all of these. I'm using the score tape uh, for the outside piece. Score tape is nice and strong, and you need that when you're dealing with watercolor paper, especially if it's got a little bit of a warp to it. So I'm attaching it all the way around because I want this to lay nice and flat and the finished product look really professional. So rub it down and then peel up the protective cover, and that's going to be the first piece that goes onto your card base. Make sure it's the right way up. <laughs> Colors to the left and centered there nicely. See how you get that nice frame? Next I'm going to use white glue and I'm using my Tombow just because I have lots of it in the house and I like it. And I'm going to put a thin strip right down the edge because that's where my inlay is going to go. And so I just run that around and try to not get too much on there because you don't want it oozing up and out after you lay this in. And it doesn't matter if it oozes towards the center because, of course, we've got the other piece that's going to cover that. So, pardon my head. <laughs> in goes the inlay. And I'm going to gently push that down. And then I'm going to add some more glue to the center. And I'm going to put the center of my art piece right in there and it fits nice and snug. And so then you might see a little bit of glue popping around. I use a Kleenex and go around and just tap it to push it down, make sure I've got it nicely secured. And that's the nice part about using the liquid glue is it gives you a couple of seconds to maneuver things around and get them where you want it before it sets. So there you go. A little tip about that inlaid piece, you'll see here up close that I have a little bit of my paint that has transferred from this piece that I cut out to the gray piece. And what you can do is you can take your mono sand eraser and you can just get in there and very gently lift that up and take any of that ink out of there. I forgot to clean uh, the little ledge in that die before I did that die cutting. So doing that ahead of time would save this step. Finally, I'm going to pop my card back into the Misty, holding it down with those magnets, and that's why you don't want to transfer ink to them. You want to keep them nice and clean. And I'm going to use this to stamp my sentiment. The reason I am terrible at getting sentiments on cards straight. Misty solves that problem for me because it's got a grid on the front panel, which my front panel is over on the right-hand side. So I'm going to use this sentiment, and it's from the Wild Rose Bouquet, uh, also from Picket Fence, and it has a cute little sentiment in there. I have uh, a friend... I have in mind for this card. So I needed just the right sentiment. So you can place it on there and see if it's straight. And then when you close the arm of your Misty, it attaches to that. And you can look at the grid and make sure that everything is straight before you do your stamping. And mine is straight. So I'm going to get my black ink out again. And that's my Gina K uh, Amalgam. And I'm going to stamp this again a couple of times because, again, we're working on watercolor paper. It's lumpy, so it's going to take a couple of inked impressions. Whoops, get rid of that ink before I stamp. I don't want that transferred to my card or to my magnet. Okay, so I stamped it a couple of times until it was nice and dark, and that finished off my card for me. So here are my finished cards. I have a list of all the supplies that I used with links to the different places that you can shop. Uh, underneath this video and also there's a link to my blog where I have a full list there as well. I hope you enjoyed today's video and I hope you will give these Arteza products a try. I really enjoyed them and I think as a crafter and card maker that you probably would too. And so thanks very much for stopping in. If you enjoyed today's video, please consider giving me a thumbs up and until next time, toodles!